August turned out to be hot for the James Webb Telescope. The instrument shared the first direct photograph of an exoplanet, proved the existence of Einstein rings in space, and witnessed the birth of a young star. Let's not waste your time and start the analysis right away. We'll be pleased if you click like for this video. So, something happened that everyone was waiting for in the very first days of James Webb's work. The telescope has finally shared a direct photo of a planet outside the solar system. No visualization of radiation, spectral differentiation, and other tricks that astronomers resort to to get a picture of an exoplanet. HIP 65426b was taken by means of a direct photograph. But before opening the champagne, we'd like to remind you that the event is undoubtedly outstanding, but not too much. Currently, humanity has as many as 15 photographs of exoplanets, and 13 more have candidate status. Moreover, James Webb's photo is not even the most impressive. Look at the rotation animation of the four planets orbiting the star HR8799, or for example, ROX's 42BB. Impressive, isn't it? People have already photographed exoplanets, so no revolution has happened yet. James Webb photographed not even the most distant of the planets. The record so far belongs to the planet AB Arage B, which was also photographed this year using the Subaru telescope. AB Arage B is 508 light years away from Earth, while James Webb's HIP 65426b is 385 light years away. Moreover, this is not even the first photo of this planet. In 2017, it was already photographed by the European Space Agency's Very Large Telescope. Unlike Webb, it just used tricks, and not quite a direct way to photograph it. One way or another, the new telescope did not make a super breakthrough, but nothing wrong happened either. At the moment, James Webb is still testing and trying to push the ceiling of its capabilities. The easiest way to do this is to photograph targets we already know. That's why the planet HIP 65426b was chosen. We already had its photo and have something to compare it with. It turned out quite well. And this is only the beginning of the full-fledged James Webb work. It will undoubtedly give us much more detailed photographs of entirely new planets. Specifically, the power to detect planets with the temperature almost equal to Earth's and at distances of only 15 light years away. Sooner or later, with the help of James Webb, we will meet our space neighbors. In the meantime, let's be happy with what we have. HIP 65426b is the so-called Super Jupiter. The planet is six to eight times heavier than our gas giant and several times hotter. Its surface temperature is just over a thousand degrees, even though this planet is located 92 times farther from its star than our Earth from the Sun. If we follow the logic of the solar system, it should be very cold. But the system does have a twist. It's very young. Planet HIP 65426b was formed 10 to 20 million years ago when the dinosaurs died on Earth. That's why it's so hot. The telescope also found clouds of reddish silicate dust. It's not a good place for life. According to our findings, it physically can't exist there, and the exoplanet wasn't photographed trying to find life. The very existence of such a photo is already great. Compared to stars, planets are incredibly dim. HIP 65426b, for example, is 10,000 times dimmer than its star. Considering how close they are by the universe's standards, this is the task. Simply speaking, getting a photo of this planet from the solar system was as difficult as taking a picture of the smartphone screen of a person standing next to a lighthouse burning at full capacity on Earth, and all this from a distance of almost 100 kilometers. It requires surgical precision, and 10 billion investment is not in vain. Most importantly, no matter how powerful telescopes we build on Earth, James Webb is not hampered by the atmosphere. It can and will allow a ground-based telescope to photograph an exoplanet. However, in addition to photos, other types of radiation are also important to scientists, propagating at wavelengths that the atmosphere blocks. However, the space telescope is protected. Moreover, in addition to the photo, James Webb gave scientists an idea of the planet's composition, and most importantly, it confirmed all theoretical calculations. This means that the search for life on exoplanets can begin, although we should not expect photos in HD quality. Even such an advanced device is incapable of doing this. Astronomers plan that only the next generation of space telescopes will be able to share good photographs of planetary disks, which are scheduled to launch in the middle of the next decade. Well, let's move on to the next photo, which clearly demonstrates the power of the human mind. 
Albert Einstein, at the beginning of the last century, purely theoretically calculated that massive objects bend not only space-time, but also light. Thus was born the theory of gravitational lensing. If we look at a fairly massive galaxy and another galaxy behind it, according to Einstein, the mass of the galaxy in front will bend the light and act as a magnifying glass, which will show us the picture behind. It's important to understand that at the time of Einstein's life, telescopes were physically incapable of showing anything like this. But towards the end of the 20th century, there was enough capability. Astronomers have begun to see gravitational lenses' bizarre curved and twisted effects. Actually, these effects flashed more than once in the photographs of James Webb, which we analyzed in past videos. But there's a unique case in the theory of gravitational lending. Orest Kvolson, a Soviet physicist, while studying Einstein's calculations in 1924, suggested an interesting situation. What if the observer, the massive object that acts as the lens, and the object that is located behind it are located on an almost even straight line? According to Orestes, we see not just a lens, but an almost perfect circle in this case. After all, the light will be refracted evenly, clearly, and symmetrically. The hypothetical design was called the Einstein ring and was not used for half a century because the telescopes were relatively weak. However, toward the end of the 20th century, a purely theoretically predicted phenomenon began to appear in photographs. At the moment, dozens of Einstein rings are known. The most popular of them is the so-called smiley, an image of a cluster of galaxies that shows such a beautiful picture by bending light from more distant galaxies. Moreover, we now know multiple Einstein rings. After all, if two objects create a ring, then three will already produce two rings, right? The Hubble telescope quickly confirmed the idea. Well, James Webb, in his favorite manner, showed us the Einstein ring located at an insane distance. Light from a galaxy with a complicated name has been coming to us for 12 billion years. The photo, of course, is not as colorful as that of Hubble, but that's because this telescope never dreamed of such distant objects. More precisely, at the moment, the galaxy that is in the center of the ring is located somewhere 25 billion light years from Earth. Without gravitational lensing, we would not be able to see a distant galaxy in such a resolution, even in our dreams. However, the effect predicted by Einstein allowed scientists to study the enlarged galaxy in good revolution, even if the lens effects would turn it into an almost perfect circle. Another new photo of James Webb is an incredibly beautiful process of the star's birth. More specifically, CHA MMS1 stars from the Chameleon Cloud Complex. Actually, it's too early to call it a star. For such objects, the term protostar is suitable. After all, thermonuclear fusion has not yet started inside the object. As you can see in the photo, CHA MMS1 is still in the process of compressing the molecular cloud, which is compressed and creates a star. The compression process is uneven, which is why the photo looks like an artist's painting. This protostar is remarkable in that it's almost the youngest of all that mankind has ever observed. CHA MMS1 belongs to the zero protostellar class. It includes the embryos of stars whose age does not exceed 10,000 years. This particular star, according to scientists, may even be less than a thousand years old. That is, during the time of the Roman Empire, it might not have existed yet. The process of mass gained by a star can take millions of years, and it all depends on the size. Large stars collect dust and start nuclear reactions very quickly. However, they burn out, exploding in supernova. Small stars have been gaining material for a very long time. However, once lit, they shine for billions of years. There are also those stars which cannot gain mass and freeze in an intermediate state between a star and a planet. Such objects are called brown dwarfs. Thermonuclear reactions in their bowels are going on, but their power is insufficient. So the dwarfs, consuming fuel, shrink and dim. The radii of such stars are approximately equal to Jupiter, and the temperature may be close to zero degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, or fortunately, there are a lot of such loser stars in the universe. Due to their dimness, it is challenging to find them, and for some time, scientists seriously considered brown dwarfs to be candidates for the title of dark matter in the universe. However, further calculations and improvement of observation instruments rejected the theory. According to current data, most stars still gain mass, and brown dwarfs are not so common. For example, 
within 10 parsecs from the Earth. There are 85 of them and 373 stars. In short, they are not drawn to dark matter. Scientists will observe the growth process of CHA MMS1, comparing it with other protostars. Since it is a long process, we will not notice changes during our life. However, everything is not so bad. After all, space is huge, and there are many protostars in other stages of evolution. So instead of following just one, we can find hundreds at different stages of evolution and watch live as a cloud of gas evolves into a star. If you watched this video and liked it, we'll be very happy with your likes and subscription to the channel. We'll be back soon with some new photos. See you soon, friends.